Alright, y'all don't mind us. We're just talking about the great book of life. What's the last section, I believe you say? Okay, let's, let's get to it. Some good stuff going on. Huh? Alright, y'all, if you're just joining us, you, you, you got, uh, you're you in chapter 6 of the Third Testament of the Bible. Um, you say you're in an advanced class day? I always say whenever you teach in the class, it's an advanced class. <laughs> All right, let's see if we get, I don't know, I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but let's go on. My word will continue written for all time. With it, you will form the book of the third era, the third testament. The final message from the father from the three eras has God wielded his golden scribes to leave his wisdom to humanity. This is the book that he was talking about in Revelations. This is what the seals for. Remember we got six seals that had six seals that had to be open before the seventh seal, which the seventh seal is the great book of life. Alright, let's go on. Thirty eight. Moses was the first golden scribe. Okay, well uh, uh, before we go too far, but notice what he says right here about these golden scribes. He says my word will continue written for all time with it you will form the book of the third era, the third testament, the final message from the Father. For in the three eras has God willed his golden scribes. So he's he's gotten his golden scribes to leave his wisdom to humanity. Okay, now okay, he says well, go ahead and play. Moses was the first golden scribe. Now you remember what Moses did. Now <clears throat> you read in the book of Jasher, I believe, is where you find out that Moses Got the information from the the uh, uh, Exodus from I mean from Genesis. Where did he get it from? Uh, Moses got the book from it was passed down. No, he studied with uh, Seth and uh, Enoch. So he studied with the patriarchs from the, from before him. Where did he get the books from? Now that's where he might have got his law, but you know they didn't actually write those books. Where did he actually get the books from? Enoch? No, the same place Enoch got his books from was the angels taught him. Okay. The angels gave him what, what was written there. Because remember, you say Seth and all of those guys, but they had, no, they had not much idea to go on as far as you know what happened before the creation of Adam. Right. They, they, there was no way right, for right, them okay. to know that. Okay. You know, so in the beginning stuff, they had to come directly from the angels. So right. just like, you know, so that's what, you know, I was wondering why he didn't call... Um, Enoch the first golden scribe. Enoch was the first writer, but you know, we're talking about the golden scribes, I guess. These are the ones that actually got to write what we call the Bible. Enoch, we don't call him the Bible, even though it's scripture. It's extra canonical stuff. Okay. Which the father used to inscribe in, in erasable letters in a book, the events of the first era. Yeah. So in erase, erase it he said did he say erasable or unerasable? Inerasable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's talking about Genesis. Yeah, and, and as a side note, Moses wrote more than just the first five books. He wrote uh the the um the book of Adam and Eve. The first part of the book of Adam and Eve. There's a book called, you know, the second part of Adam and Eve, he wrote that. He wrote a book called Jubilees. He wrote uh he wrote some other did he write Jasher? I don't know if he wrote Jasher. But he he was the first golden scribe, and with him we get we get you know what happened from the beginning until the yes. prophet or to yeah, you know, where he left. Joshua. Moses was the golden scribe of Yahuwah. Now, now this is weird. This of course that little lady over there be saying it's old. It's a it's a. But remember, we just had this discussion in the last section about how she thinks there's two different gods: Jehovah, or Jehovah is found Jehovah and Jesus. But now, this kind of asked to what she's saying. She's jumping up and down. Then, I told you, I told you that he said, "Well, okay, well, Moses was the scribe of Jehovah. Okay, let's go on." Among the apostles and followers of the second era, Jesus had four scribes, who were Matthew, Mark. Luke and John. But you know, oddly enough, it, like I said, it's just important what she said. Now, I don't, I don't still support her. You know, I think it's a crazy idea that there's two gods, but 
looking at this verse 38 and 39, I can understand her confusion now. It's, you know. Well, it seems to me like it's saying that Moses was, it's saying that Moses was the first scribe yeah. in that era, but then after he passed, other scribes came. Is, no, that, is that what he's saying? No, he's saying, no, he's saying there was other scribes came, sure, but we're talking about the golden scribe. He said the golden sky we're talking about and, and he, he names he names Moses first and now he's about to tell you that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was the other golden scribes. So he don't even count like Thomas or the Gospel of Peter. He don't he didn't call Paul a golden scribe. So no, uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Daniel wasn't even a golden scribe. Moses and then Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These were the golden scribes of the divine master. And when the time arrived to unite the first testament and the second with binding of love, recognition of spiritual progress, then one single book was formed. So he didn't say who the golden scribe was this time, but we know the golden scribe of this one is, I think, is Roe Rogers, right? He was the reincarnated spirit of the Elijah uh, who gotten all of this these lessons back there in 1866 to 1884. Didn't name him. Um, maybe because nobody's really familiar with the Road Rogers guy, but he's saying that this third one is going to be the combination. It's going to be the, the glue. It's like the God particle. This is the one that, that, you know, makes everything make sense. Now, in the third era in which you have, again, my word, I have given name the Golden Scribes so that it may be written down. Okay, so he's going to tell us who the, 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 the scribes are this era. We ain't got a guess. Hey, let's go. When the time arrives, you will form a single book, and this book, that of the third era, will, when the time is right, be united with the book of the second and first eras, and then with the revelations, prophecies, and words of the three eras, the book of life will be formed for the enjoyment of all the spirits. You can you can put a check mark on this. This is done. That's done. What, that's done. What he's saying right there, you know. He's saying when these three books are put together, he's saying that he's going to have the golden scribes of this era. Well, the golden scribes of this era have already compiled this book. I mean, you're looking at it in a PDF form. I, I have it on a Word document on my computer. We're, we're past that point. And he says when we put these two together, then what what what's going to happen then? Uh, the enjoyment for the enjoyment of the spirits. Mm -hmm. Then you shall recognize that from the first word to the last, all has been fulfilled in spirit and truth. Yep. Now, let me take this out. No, I can't take it down. I said that. So, in spirit and truth, he said he was coming back in spirit and truth, but nobody really understands what they mean until you get your hands on this copy of the Bible, I promise you. Until you read this, or somehow get this, you can get it intuitively, you can get it through divine revelation. But, you know, people like me, I have to get it out of the book, you know. And, and once you get it, though, you, 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 you do understand what he means by spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. Now, this is from a reference earlier, this 637 goes all the way back to uh, verse 37 of chapter 6, where, let me see what it says, the reference is to those witnesses to the teachings of the Lord whose task was the recording of the teaching in shorthand or typewritten form. He's talking about Moses and he's talking about Matthew, Mark, and John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, let's finish this sentence. It starts right there at that, and then it comes down here at all. That all, go ahead. That all the prophecies were the future history that the Father revealed he revealed to humanity. Okay, I'm going to go back. Ooh. Then you shall recognize that from the first word to the last, all has been fulfilled in spirit and truth. That all prophecies were the future history that the Father revealed to humanity. Future history. Yeah. That's why we got a little confused on some of these verses. It's because he's talking this future history stuff. Future his, his story. You, yeah, a few, I don't know. It's, 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 you don't know which, you don't know which, what are you talking about? You're saying that, you know, something's going to happen. Are we waiting for a new book? No, it's already done. It's just written in a future history kind of way. For only God can write of events yet to be. Future history. Only God can write future history. When the prophets have spoken, it was not they, but God who did so through their conduit. Mm -hmm. So, for all of the people who say, man wrote the Bible. Man wrote it. Who wrote it? Who wrote it? Who wrote it? What was his name? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, he was a man, wasn't he? Yeah. 
So he wrote the Bible, didn't he? Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, how did Jeremiah write the future? Jeremiah can't write the future. Right. It was the father who did it through them. Yeah. See, you say you don't like the word play crazy? See, this book gets rid of play crazy. You know, we can stop play crazy and, you know what I'm saying, and we can get into spirit and truth. You know, you want to know what play crazy means? Play crazy, the opposite of spirit and truth. It's materialism and ignorance. Put them two together, you get play crazy. Where are we at? 43. I have prepared my new chosen ones sufficiently. And had, as had been Moses and the four disciples in the second era. So that my words is recorded with complete claimness, clarity, and truth. For it is for the generations of tomorrow. And if any word add to or remove anything from the book, I shall see to them. Some of these don't describe. That's why they go to scribe. That's why they don't let everybody write everything. His word is, 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 is it, guys. His word is the most important thing on the planet. If you can somehow eliminate, y'all get Donald Trump and the Pope because they is, but if you can somehow eliminate the word of God off of this planet, Satan would have it. He, he belonged to him. The, the world will be over. Forget about it. It's not worth living. Ain't nothing, it ain't going to live. It can't live without the word. We're struggling here, babe. Let's go on. Let's match again. We've got to go fast. we got to go fast. 44. Now, my very beloved children, who shall care about this book that you are forming, none in truth but the moment shall come in which a humanity full of anxiety and curiosity asks you for this book, and then it shall be unveiled, scrutinized, and discussed. In that struggle of ideals, brand, fans will arise, men of science, theologians, philosophers, and the book of wisdom, and all shall speak of my doctor. Yeah. Go on. Oh, she, oh. I'm, I'll tell my wife, man, she, yeah, she's gone. She ain't get gone. Now, my very beloved children, who shall care about this book that you are forming? None, in truth, but the moment shall come in which humanity full of anxiety. See, now, you, you wonder why coaching is like putting up all of these videos. I, I didn't put up. How many hours do you think a video? Mm -hmm. Take a guess. A hundred hours? A thousand hours? I would say probably about five, five, about five hundred. But nobody, nobody has, I mean, only a few people has had a chance to watch them, you know, but yet I'm still cranking them out as fast as I can. And say, so why? Because I'm following the pattern of this third, of this third testament here. So that's what it's saying. Who shall care about who shall care about, you know, this 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 class that we're putting back together? Nobody. Nobody gonna care about it. Not now. Not in 2018. We probably got ten hits. In truth, but the moment shall come which which a humanity full of anxiety and of curiosity asks for your book. Meaning they wanna know where you're getting this information from. How are you knowing to do this stuff? How are you understanding? How are you moving mountains? How are you flying? How are you how are you Changing weather patterns. And then it shall be unveiled. Okay, so once they ask for it, then of course people are going to give it to them. You know, I've been, I've been trying to force it in their hand already. I ain't waiting for them to ask. I give them a link to the Third Testament, you know, in a quick minute. But once they get it, then it'll be scrutinized. You know, kind of, you know, they want to see, you know, people going to want to test it out. People take religion and, and scripture very seriously. They're going to look at it and discuss. And that struggle of ideas... <clears throat> Uh, these bands will arise in the struggle. Bands will arise, which means groups of people are going to form. Some are going to say this and some are going to say that. Men of science are going to show up. These are the doctors who are going to get involved. So then you got the religion, you got the preacher and the doctor, the, 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 the bishop and the surgeon standing side by side in this, in this thing you're talking about here, this unveiling and this scrutinization. The, uh, besides the theologians and the philosophers. Imagine these four guys standing there, you know? Uh, to the nations will be carried the testimony of your word. Now, see, you're living it out. Remember, he he tells us not to to uh, preach this from the streets, not to be down in the parks or whatever. You're going to be rejected by the church, but yet they're going to come seeking this information, you know. And what they're going to get is the testimony of your word and the book of wisdom, and all shall speak of my doctrine. See, this thing, like I said, is going to spread like a disease. 
It's going to it's going to spread. That shall be the beginning of the new battle. So he's telling you how this thing is going to be going to fight. You know, Colton is fighting as smart as he as he looks. You know, you know he just he just read this thing. He he knows about the battle. Know the weapons before the battle starts. That's where that that's where that phrase comes from out of this book. Know the weapons before the battle starts. He tells us how the battle is going to play out. You know, we playing chess, and I already know what moves you're going to make. I already know your strategy. I don't found me some chess book that you've been studying that shows your openings, your middle game, and your close game, and I know what you're going to do. And it's just a matter of playing my pieces according to what you're about to do. I can still make mistakes, but hey, I know what you're going to do. That gives me a slight advantage, don't you think? He says, that shall be the beginning of the new battle, the war of words, of thoughts, and of ideas. And in the end, we'll all have recognized the truth and spirit that the great book of life was written by the Lord. They will share brotherhood and love each other as it is my will. Okay, let's go. The begin okay, so that's this battle. You know? It, They're gonna reject it at first. They're not really yeah, some are gonna flat out reject it, you know, and you know, it's gonna be the people that are rejecting the word now, the people that you can't convince right now that the King James Version is right or that they should be following it, the, the those are gonna be the same person that, you know, what do you know? They're gonna be the retarded ones later, you know, held back in the in the belief system, slow to be spiritualized or whatever. So yeah. And but it's, it's 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 this war of words, thoughts, and ideas that we're talking about. War of words, thoughts, and ideas is going to be what we said. We've got the doctors, the pastors, the uh, theologians, the philosophers, all around debating over whether this document that we're looking about is real or not. And see, you know, when I read that, when I said, okay, these guys going going to continue to play around and fumble over this thing, you know, trying to get right. It's like playing. It's like playing a game of pig and a poke. You know what pig and a poke is? Mm -hmm. That's where everybody get around in this big old hub, huddle, like a rugby huddle. You know what rugby is? Right. Where everybody put their arms around a big old fifteen people huddle, and you throw the ball in a pig and a poke. You throw the ball that the ball is right there in the middle, and the bravest one was supposed to run in there, grab the ball, and then t break through the pack somehow and run to score the score the the goal. So here they are in the huddle, and the ball is right there on the ground, and if you still establishing the rule of the pig and the poke and go to the fight, got the ball, I didn't score it. I'm standing down on the other end of the daggone field. At least I'm running toward the end of the field while they're still trying to figure out if, if, if we're going to play this game seriously or not. You know what I mean? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I say that to say I'm just, you know, editing. All right. Why was the word of Jehovah in the first era not sufficient to unite the world? And why did Jesus not achieve it in the second era? Okay. Why, why was that? Well, I believe he's getting ready to tell us, right? Why in this time has it not been sufficient that since 1866 I have been given you my word? Why in this time has it not been sufficient that since 1866 I have been giving you my word for nations to love one another and live in peace? That's kind of a hard question, but it's saying, you know, why, why, why did it fail? Mm -hmm. why, why did the scripture not get us there? It is necessary for the three books to form one single book so that this word illuminates the universe. It was wait, so they were waiting for the third book. Couldn't, have, couldn't do it without the third book. Couldn't do it without the third book. You gotta have this book, you know. And so, it's 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 it's, it's changes the this book is changing the game. The book the game has changed. Only problem is, you know, the people who don't come down here to the court every so often don't know that, and they still dressed in their old uniforms and still carrying their old got a football. But you know, the game has changed. You wanna go get that? I'm gonna keep going. Maybe somebody could add to the show. I don't know. Then shall humanity be surrounded by this light, and the curse of Babel will be erased. Okay, now we're talking about y'all can't find it. It's in there. It's in the pocket somewhere or something. All right, let's see. We almost finished with this, y'all. We're almost finished with this chapter. 
we just wait and see if there's somebody interested on the phone. We're going to make them part of the show. They'll call them back. Now nah, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. It is necessary for the three books to form one single book so that the word illuminates the universe. The inshallah humanity be surrounded by this light. The light, remember, is the understanding. So once we have the three books, it's kind of like one of those movies where you had to have the three parts. And, you know, these books, these, these parts were um, um, unilluminated, you know, by themselves. They didn't really do much. But once you put them all three together, they came to life. That's what this is talking about. Then shall humanity be surrounded by my light. And the curse of Babel will be erased. Okay, now what was the curse of Babel? Remember, the Babel, in Babel, what they were trying to do was they were trying to destroy God. They were building something, some big tower, trying to reach the heavens. We don't know what it was. I bet it had something to do with spiritualism. We better go back and read it. But they were trying to do something wrong, but it created a curse. We do know that that's how we got the diversity of language. Maybe that's the, cur the curse, that we can't talk to each other, that we can't communicate with each other. And maybe that's the curse that will be reversed. For all men will read the great book of life. Wait a minute. Everybody going to read this thing? Remember, it's not just on paper, but it's in your spirit, too. So you, you, you can read it on paper or you can read it, you know, through, you know, divine revelations. But it's going to get in there either way. It's, it's a it's destined for our spirits. Our spirits are going to have this thing regardless and will practice the same doctrine. OK, and will love one another as children of God. See, right now we don't practice the same doctrine. There's millions of doctrines. Doctrine means teaching. Me go to one church, they call themselves a Baptist church and get one teaching, and you can go right down the street to another Baptist church on the same on the same block and get another another doctrine. That's exactly why there are two Baptist churches, is because there are different doctrines going that's how they, that's why they split. One of them to teach one thing and one wanted to teach another. And we'll love one another as children of God. See, right now, you know, we don't really understand this this materialism got us twisted up, thinking we have to, you know, hoard stuff. And we're going to do so in spirit and truth. The spirit and truth is big, guys. And, you know, we're about to wrap this thing up. It's, you know, y'all find it? Yes, mom. Well, let's call it back. Y'all want to hear, y'all, you want to, let's, let's wrap up this show and then we'll call it back. So, the way we end, uh, the, way we end the chapters is made peace with 50, but, you know, anything you want to say? You missed the last verse there talking about the Tower of Babel. You can hear it on the show. Okay, I will. So anything else you want to close out on chapter six? Anything you learn? Anything stand out in closing remark? Um, it's just re um reiterate how important this book is to to us and that uh, all books go together, that all three are, are needed. And um, yeah, it was a good study for me. It was a good study. My peace be with you. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.